Hello, I'm Scott. Welcome to Today Pass. A like on the video will help me out tremendously, and let's go. So here we are at Hendon, joined by our lovely little rubbish truck guys here. So watch out for those as you go in and out of the driving test centre. What we're going to do now is a complete test route. I'm going to show you all the areas, what people will fail for, the serious faults, the dangerous faults on the driving test, and I will give you all feedback with all the information that you need to know to pass your driving test first time. So let's get started. I've just exit the test center from the bay behind me, come very slowly to these giveaway lines, plenty of observations, especially to the left, as there's a big bush here on the left, a George bush, the one that I can't see past. So I'm going to edge out gently, assuming that there might be a vehicle coming from the left. If you have a look here on the lamppost on the left, can you see the triangle that warns us this is a pedestrian crossing. So do take care when you come in and out of the driving test center at Hendon. It's a maximum speed of 10 miles an hour here, but also you might have pedestrians using these little paved sections in the road here. Somebody might walk around that parked vehicle that's parked directly in front of the crossing itself. That would obscure anybody that might be using the crossing. So I've got to take extra caution to have a good look. So you can see someone's coming into the test center here. Are they on a driving test? No, it doesn't look like they're on a driving test. Right, if you heard my car beep, that tells us we've reached speed limit. The car's indicated to me it's a 10 mile an hour speed limit here. I don't see any signs on this part of the road. However, I do know there's signs around the whole estate here, which is quite new development, lots of construction work going on. At the end of the road, turn left, interior mirror, exterior left mirror, and signal left. Looking right, left, right. These are the minimum observations at all junctions. And observations are the number one reason why people fail their driving test. So the number one reason for like six years in a row, junctions, observations. So guys, I can't stress it enough. When you come to any junction, take your time, a gentle approach, roughly jogging speed, depending on your visibility. The less you see, the less speed you take. Listen to your feelings. So if you have a feeling of like anxiety or you feel like something's not quite right, please, please, please slow the vehicle down until the feeling of normality resumes. Once you feel normal again, you know everything's safe and you can control the vehicle, and you can keep going in the direction that you need to travel. Now, if you don't feel good about it, mm, what do you do? Yeah, I hope you're listening. Slow down until you start to feel better. Okay, what we're going to start to do now is following some signs. So I'm going to follow this road, actually, sorry, at the traffic light, turn left, and then I'm going to be following signs thereafter. So, Traffic lights turn left. Let's have a look. There's no signs there saying that I can't do anything. Although there's a straight only arrow on the road, there's no exemption signs. My examiner's asked me to turn left. So I'm coming to the junction, doing my mirrors, doing my signals. Roughly how far from the junction? 10 to 5 car lengths away. If you're good with measurements and meters, then you're looking at anything from 50 meters maybe 20 meters from the junction, start to signal. Okay, so what's the speed limit on this road? We've joined the dual carriageway, 50 miles an hour, open road, good visibility, good conditions, build up the speed. I have a sign on my left warning me that the left lane is now going to come to an end. I can see the cones in the distance. I'm checking my mirrors early. I'm signaling right to change lanes early. I'm keeping my speed at 50 miles an hour. You want to try and adjust your speed, either speed up if you can, or start to stay at the same speed when you change lanes. Usually increasing your speed would be safer depending on the situation on the road. So if it's free flowing, if you've got lots of space, you'd want to slightly increase your speed, providing you don't go over the speed limit to change lanes. This increases the distance from the vehicle behind you, which makes it a safer opportunity for you to change lanes. I'm not going to go behind the bus, although I really want to start to position back into the left lane because there's no more roadworks there. But I know the bus is going to come to a stop at the bus stop. 
So there's no point in me going behind the bus if I know it's going to stop at the bus stop. Now that I've overtaken the bus, I've done my overtaking, I'm not overtaking anymore, I'm going to come back into the left lane. Now this is very important. So if you have a long uh, stretch or a long section of dual carriageway on your driving test, which you probably will do, especially if you're doing a test here at Hendon or Mill Hill, Hendon and Mill Hill do use the same test routes, just different test centers. I will be covering Mill Hill as well. So if you want to have a look at more routes for Hendon, you can also check out Mill Hill. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this content because there's going to be lots more. I think personally you'll learn more from these videos than you will do from mock test videos. But there's also mock test videos on the channel if you want to go have a look at those. Okay, so a bit further down the road, I know I'm going to be coming towards a roundabout. Now, at this roundabout, I'm going to be asked to go straight, which is the second exit. So, if you have a look here, there's some signs coming up on the right-hand side of the road. And that's telling us what lane to use to go where. Now, the whole way on this dual carriageway, you do want to maintain the speed limit. This part is 50. However, now that we know we're approaching a junction, we adjust our speed, start to gradually brake, especially because it's a downhill. Also, there's a bend in the road. So this braking is not only going to help you for the speed when you approach the junction, but also help you to keep control of the vehicle on the downhill not to increase in speed and also to help you with the steering of the vehicle. So here we are, I'm going to stop roughly tires and tarmac from the vehicle in front. That means I can see the wheels of the vehicle and even a slight section of road, which is the tarmac behind the vehicle in front. We're going straight. We know we can use this lane as a straight arrow and we had the road signs on the right hand side earlier that showed us that this lane is a head lane. That's the first exit. Mirror, mirror, signal left. Interior mirror, exterior mirror, left signal as I pass the first exit to take the second exit. And look at that. Nice and smooth. Do look out because there are some pedestrian crossings after the actual roundabout. This is very common. If regardless of it being a big roundabout or a mini roundabout, you may have a pedestrian crossing on the exit to the roundabout. So it's very common and it's missed. So lots of people will be focusing so much on the actual roundabout, the driving part, and then not see ahead to the pedestrian crossing and miss that and actually fail for pedestrian crossings. Okay, so we're going to go straight again. It's the second exit. This is Apex Corner. This is one of the big roundabouts here. Very, very difficult. So as you can see, it's a sign posted up here and we're going towards what says Stanmore, which is straight second exit. So what lane do I use? Is there a straight arrow in this lane on the left? I don't know, but there's multiple lanes. Can you see how many lanes there are? So usually when there's like three lanes, four lanes, the left lane will be a left only lane. Now I actually, there's two reasons why I'm using this lane. One, because I'm not too sure. So I'm gonna leave a gap here to see if we can see the road markings in the left lane. I don't see any left only arrows. Okay, so I'm not sure. But more importantly, I was making progress. Now I must make sure that I stay in my lane. Can you see I'm still in this second lane? It's okay, I can use this lane. Mirror, mirror signal left. I'm watching these vehicles on the right, just in case they cut in. I stayed in the lane that I was in. I didn't even change into the left lane, but now I'm checking my mirrors again, and I can see there's actually an opportunity. The vehicle behind me is not too close, so I'm gonna move into the left lane. So that's Apex Corner, really horrible, tricky roundabout. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back round to Apex Corner, and I'm gonna show you that roundabout again. This time, what we're going to do is we're going to turn right. Now, when you're asked to come down roads like this, residential roads, you may be asked to pull over and stop on the left. Make sure you do your interior mirror, left exterior mirror, signal left, and choose a nice gap. So I can see there's a telegraph pole here behind this silver car. I know that there's going to be a bit of raised curb. I've done my mirrors, done my signal, pulling in. I know there's raised curb next to a pole, whether it's a telegraph pole, a, a lamppost, or whatever, a tree maybe. Done my pulling in, identified my area. There's more spaces further down the road I could have gone to. Done now all round observations. The examiner's gonna ask me to move away. Can you see there's an oncoming vehicle? 
even though it's turning, I'm not going to go. Now it's clear. I did a double check because there had been a gap between me talking and assessing that oncoming vehicle. So I rechecked before moving away as other vehicles or other road users may have come along in that short period of time. Okay, so we're going to go to the end of the road and we're going to turn left. Uh, roads like this, also your examiner may ask you to do the manoeuvre. If you want to go check out on driving tips to complete your manoeuvre for your driving test, then go to the playlist on Two Day Pass channel and you'll find manoeuvres there. And you can check out in depth all the tips and tricks that you need to know in order to pass your manoeuvre. Okay, end of the road, turn left, interior mirror, exterior mirror, left. That's us coming back over to the left. And right, left, right, no traffic there on the right. Can you see the speed that I used as I approached the junction? I know you can't see the speedometer, but I'm gradually slowing down from a running to a jogging speed to a running speed and possibly coming to a stop. Now look at this sign here. Follow the sign towards Tottenridge. Tottenridge. <laughs> okay. And I'm English. Well, sort of. Right, okay, at the roundabout, turn left. Interior mirror, exterior mirror, left. Signal. This is the first roundabout. Now, because I'm going left, left again, nice and easy. Just keep in the left lane. On the next route, we'll have a look at this in more depth, these mini roundabouts. And left again. So, interior mirror, exterior mirror, left. My signal stayed on, so I didn't actually need to add a signal at all. I just needed to check the mirrors again just for safety. It's always a good habit. Whether you kind of need to or not, it's not a huge impact to a habit. If you have a habit of just gradually checking the mirrors every so often, you're still keeping focus on the road ahead because they're glances. Listen, just a second check. One, one, back on the road ahead. Okay, we're coming towards Apex Corner. So we're going to be turning right towards central London. This is the hardest thing you'll have to do at Hendon Driving Test Center. Apex corner roundabout, guys. Here we go. Right, turning right. Obviously, the most technical part to any roundabout. So any pedestrians on this pedestrian crossing? No. Checking the interior mirror. Checking the exterior right mirror. Signaling right. Coming into the very far right lane. We've got that top there for Totten Ridge someone correct me in the comments down below and that is written in this lane so i know i need this lane now if you're not too sure if you're turning right on the roundabout it's always okay to keep the right lane to turn right and now there's a huge gap in the traffic i'm taking this opportunity lots of gas and going i'm going into the far right lane now actually i just saw tops there on the on the second lane but this lane should go there too i'm now just following this lane can you see how the road markings they took me out of the right lane those white lines started to spiral into the middle i can see my exits coming up and check my interior mirror check my left mirror signal left traffic lights change that's nice keeps the roundabout controlled i just had a glance over to my left there wasn't any vehicles there but i'm keeping the right lane and this lane and the lane that was on the exit they've merged into one now, I'm going to see whether it's safe to move into the far left lane. So we're checking the mirrors. It's not safe. There's a vehicle passing. Let that vehicle pass. Then check the mirrors again. Then signal. Now, lots of people ask, why do you check your mirrors before signaling? Now, this is a great point. The vehicle there was passing. I checked my mirrors before signaling. I could see that the vehicle was passing, so therefore I did not, in capital letters, signal. At the roundabout, turn right, third exit. This is going to be a roundabout, turning right, third exit. Interior mirror, exterior mirror, right, signaling right, positioning into the right lane. So mirrors, signal, position, speed, starting to slow down from a running speed, to a jogging speed, to a walking speed, and stop. There you go. So nice and gentle, approaching speed, and then when you reach the junction, this routine applies to all junctions. You look, traffic lights change. I don't need to look because the traffic lights change, but it's always a good habit to have just in case someone runs a light. Past the first exit, 
coming towards the second exit. This is usually where we'll spiral out. So this is where I'm going to start to check my interior mirror, left mirror, signal left. And if it's safe, I start to slightly let go of the steering just a little bit, keeping my hands, <coughs> excuse me, keeping my hands ready to adjust the steering, but I'm just relaxing the steering, letting it go a little. And what that does is that actually mirror, mirror, signal left, take the next road on the left. That actually allows the car to start to spiral and move out towards the side of the road that you need, which is the left side as you exit the roundabout. The problem a lot of people have when they're exiting roundabouts is they don't relax the steering wheel. They keep the steering gripped hard, and that means that you're actually still keeping steering right, which is gonna just keep you going round and round and round on the roundabout. So what you need to do when you approach the second exit, if you're taking the third exit, start to release the grip on the steering, relax. Allow the steering to gently adjust itself. This is gonna make you move out to the left, closer to the lane that you're going to need and if it's safe we move all the way over to the left when we exit the roundabout so we're pretty much halfway through this route now we're just coming back round there's a bit of an awkward junction coming up i believe at the end of this road now can you see a downhill here when we're going downhills we want to cover the brake keep control of the vehicle especially in a bend like this notice the road markings in the center of the road they are double solid lines that means no overtaking at the end of the road turn left interior mirror exterior mirror left so that's mirror, mirror signal position left roughly about meter from the left slow or speed and then look right left right Zebra Crossing has an island in the middle. Now, if a Zebra Crossing has an island in the middle, that's treated as two separate crossings. So I only need to stop and wait for my half of the Zebra Crossing. This is not a pedestrian crossing. It's just the island alone. That means I do not need to stop because it's not a pedestrian crossing. Now, a bit further down the road, we're going to be passing Mill Hill Driving Test Centre. I will just sort of mention that as we get near. Um, and we will be doing more videos today on Mill Hill. So if you want to go check that out, you can see that. And these routes are also routes for Hendon. Uh, in case I didn't mention that at the beginning, I believe I did. Um, but as you can see, I, I have lots of information to share with you guys. Remember to like the video if I've helped you out at all. And hopefully with these assessments, with these tips and the advice I'm giving you, you will be more knowledgeable and pass your driving test first time. Zebra crossing here, pedestrian crossing, got the zebra poles with the beacons. I can see the blue sign there for the mini roundabout. At the mini roundabout, turn right. It's the second exit, interior mirror, right mirror, signal. I've done that already, but I'm checking again. There's no harm, like I mentioned earlier. It's a good habit. They're just second glances. There's a nice gap on the right, uh, so there's no traffic coming, no immediate danger. So I'm just gently keeping that speed drifting through the roundabout. Go straight at the next roundabout. Can you see the straight arrow in the right lane? I'm going straight and I'm going half my car on that white circle. I don't want to go swerving to the left to go around that white circle because there was that lane on the left. If I start to swerve out to the left, avoiding that white circle, I'm only going to go into danger and into traffic that will be in the left lane. So please, guys, if you feel it's safer, which most of the time it is, and in that case was necessary, you must go slightly on the white circles. If I didn't, I would have had an accident. So that's why it's necessary and it's safer, like I just said, just to clarify if it's safe, you're not going to hurt anybody or yourself. If it's necessary because you're avoiding having an accident, you must do what it is that you need to do because it is safe and it is necessary. If that means you're going over a road marking like the white circle slightly, that's okay. Maybe you've got a lorry oncoming and you need to go up the pavement because the lorry hasn't got space to pass. This does happen at driving test centers. Okay, so I'm going to be turning here left. So why have I positioned in this lane? Because after I'm turning right. So this is super complicated. You have to plan for your junction after, before. Does that make sense? So like the double mini roundabouts, we're gonna go and do that on the next route, okay? So if you're turning 
left and then right as you approach the mini roundabout you use the first mini roundabout you use the right lane because you'll need the right lane for the second mini roundabout so here i'm not too knowledgeable of the area i do know it somewhat i have been here um i used the right lane because i wasn't sure if the left lane would have gone left and right but i know the right lane would have gone left and right i hope that makes sense if you're not sure just write down in the comments below ask any questions you like and i will do my best to get back to you and try to help you as much as possible that is the reason why i'm making these videos interior mirror left mirror and i'm moving back into the left lane now this is a 50 mile an hour road so i'm building my speed trying to get up to 50 now and i'm in the left lane which is the position for normal driving now if i did not use the left lane and i stayed in the middle lane i would most likely fail my driving test the reason is because unless i'm overtaking or turning right i do not need to be in the lanes on the right so it's very important at the traffic lights turn right mirror mirror signal this is hard and one of my students had to do this on the driving test so you can see how i went from the left lane over two lanes of traffic to now be in this very far right lane to be positioned at the traffic lights to turn right now if this is asked of you on your driving test it will be asked earlier than what i actually just said it so you will be given earlier notice to actually start to position. So you'd like to try and move into the middle lane, then make a move over to the far right lane. I would suggest doing this in stages, unless you're a very confident and experienced driver. You may be coming from another country, just getting a UK license. Obviously checking over your blind spot, just in case there's any other vehicles, like smaller vehicles, like um, a motorbike as an example. You may not catch those vehicles in the mirror. So just that glance, remember the glance is just a second look over the shoulder then that way you will know that there's a vehicle hidden in the blind spot this is very very good advice so yes you do not need to actually check blind spots as you're driving but there's two occasions where it's a very very good habit to have that is changing lanes on a dual carriageway or a motorway like you just saw me do the other situation is when exiting a roundabout. So when you leave a roundabout, say we're taking the third exit, like I have done lots of times in this video, you might want to rewind it. Maybe you would have seen me check over my left shoulder or at this left back side of the vehicle just before I actually make that decision to move across to the left lane and exit the roundabout. Today, I have been relying quite a lot on the mirrors and that's all you need to do for your driving test. So if you don't feel comfortable with checking blind spots straight away it's not necessary you don't have to do it to pass your driving test but as you get more experience maybe you've done 30 40 hours with your driving instructor it's something that you might want to to start to kind of get to grips with because it's definitely a good habit to have to make you a safer driver on road it saved me quite a few times from other people changing lanes at the same time as me on dual carriageways and motorways okay so this is pretty easy i got my filter light there green light we're back to the test center now so i could go all the other traffic was held i had my own vip lane to turn right i just needed to wait for the traffic light i'm holding a little bit of brakes here so that my car doesn't exceed the speed limit it's a 30 mile an hour road i know it's a 30 mile an hour road because there's no signs telling me the speed limit any other road that is other than 30 miles an hour will be regularly signposted as you can see there's been no speed signs on this road there would have been a speed sign if you want to rewind ah i missed my turn <laughs> there would have been a speed sign at the beginning uh, of the road as i turned now when i was actually learning to drive this is something i would always miss the speed signs at the entrances to roads so it's okay i can take this entrance in here to the test center mirror mirror signal right i'm going to come in here and there we go so we're back at the test center and I hope this video was of value to you. Now you might be doing bay parking on your driving test. 
So you just have to make sure you take your reference point, which is the line. Again, check out the channel if you'd like to see more about maneuvers, all round observations. Take your time, nice and gentle, no rush. And straighten your vehicle once you reach the bay and you're done. Like I said, there'll be more in-depth description about maneuvers on the playlist. I've been Scott. This is Two Day Pass. Stay safe, stay tuned, and I'll see you for the next test route. Bye.